May mercy, grace, and peace be yours in abundance through God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, after three weeks of dryness and drought, the last thing on my mind was rain. When I was ready to leave to attend a funeral at St. Vincent de Paul Catholic Church up the road here. But it began to rain torrentially and to hail, and it wouldn't stop. Finally, I had to run out to the car, and thinking I might speed up the trip because now I was late, I took 610 instead of County Road 30. And it was raining so hard that I couldn't see the exit, and I missed it. When I finally turned around and arrived, I got out of the car and my feet were soaking wet. In fact, I could see the polish from my black shoes had bled into my stockings and toes. Looking real good there. <laughs> At times, it seems Satan is messing with the weather, messing with our patience, planting discouragement, and a stirring up annoyance. It wasn't my Achilles heels he got, but my Achilles toes where Satan got me because I didn't dress for the weather. Ephesians' final lesson for us is about putting on the right stuff. Putting on the right stuff to defend ourselves from the wiles of the devil. I have no doubt that every week people come to the sanctuary way down by the trials and travails of life. We come needing renewal, needing God's love, comfort, peace, and assurance. Sometimes we come so depleted, we are wondering how we'll get through the week ahead. To this, dear friends in Christ, Ephesians sounds a clarion call. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. It trumpets good news. Though far off and faint at first, our attention is drawn, our eyes are lifted, and we sit up for its coming. We have been reading Ephesians all summer. This is a letter meant to fortify Christians. Today, we're in the final chapter, chapter 6, where we are given marching orders, if you will, and told that even though we are up against the evil one, we are fully equipped for the battle. We have the armor of God. Nothing is stronger. Let's look back for a moment from the first chapter in Ephesians we have been encouraged. God chose and destined us for redemption, pouring out the riches of his grace on us. God is blessing us with every spiritual blessing. In Christ, we have received an inheritance that is forever. We are to live to God's glory and praise as God's plan of salvation is working out to gather all things to him through his son, Jesus Christ. And this is all by God's grace and not our deserving nor doing. It is a gift, pure gift of God. God is building a new temple where human divisions fall away. Christ, our peace, is gathering all things together in heaven and on earth to him. We have been given a diversity of gifts, gifts to serve this church and its building through one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Therefore, blessed and gifted and equipped, we are exhorted to now lead lives worthy to the calling to which we have been called. This is the letter of Ephesians, a letter that fills us with messages of identity and purpose. It is time to awake, to rise and shine 
in the light of the sun, to live as children of light. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. We are to put on the armor of God. Now, Pastor Nancy, <laughs> this suit of armor, it isn't like they wore back in the days of the knights. Get that? In the days of the knights? <laughs> you know it was hard to stand up in those real suits of armor because of their weight and restrictive form. A medieval knight had to get help up onto his horse, an unhappy, sagging horse. It's a different type of armor we're to put on. A movable armor, an empowering armor, the strongest of all. Two stories, two Bible stories provide clarity about this, about our role and God's role in the battlefield. First, remember the story of David the shepherd boy and Goliath, the giant Philistine. Go back and read it this week. 1 Samuel 17. There, Goliath, Goliath's armor is really played up. And who, how big he was, too. His height was six cubits in a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head. He was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had greaves of bronze on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. Whatever those weights are, we know. It's crazy. <laughs> the story goes on that every day Goliath would appear at the front lines to taunt and insult the whole Israelite army where not one would dare to step out and fight Goliath. Except when the boy David came bringing food for his big brothers and saw all this trouble. David volunteered with such persistence that King Saul finally relented but not before trying to fit armor onto David. But it didn't suit David. And so he went out to battle with no armor but the armor of God. And he told Goliath this, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of the hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, so that all the earth shall know that the Lord does not save by the sword and spear, for the battle belongs to the Lord. And we know the rest of that story, right? Bonk, bump, game over. The other story I think about that is relevant is from the Gospel of Mark chapter 6. Calling the twelve to him, Jesus began to send the disciples out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belt, wear sandals and not even an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet. And the disciples went out and preached that the kingdom of God was near and that they should repent. And they drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. sends us out like his disciples with no visible protection or weapons, bringing instead the love of God. Let's think about that armor. 
Ephesians says, put the whole armor of God on, put on every piece so you're fully covered. And that's important. And it's important to know each of these then. Truth and righteousness, God's word, the helmet of salvation, shoes so we can walk everywhere proclaiming the peace of Christ and a shield of faith to hold up. In that passage, there's other important parts. In that, inside that armor that we're wearing, looking out, we're to use our eyes to keep alert against the wiles of the devil and to be in constant prayer and conversation with God. And way inside that armor, of course, and most important, is our hearts. Having our hearts for God. Having God in our hearts. As you wake up each morning, when you put on your shoes or hat or buckle your seatbelt, think of the pieces of armor in this scripture that you are also given to put on. We might turn away from such a calling. And it's even more difficult and dangerous than the struggles with our own daily egos and selfishness, struggles with moral battles. The Bible says we are fighting against darkness on a global scale. After all, who caused all the wars? The death camps, the genocides. Why is there starvation when there is enough food around? It seems so overwhelming we try to escape creating islands of comfort and apparent safety. Suburbia is such an invention, but you know the snake lives here too. Did you hear me? The snake lived in the Garden of Eden, and the snake lives here too. So there's no turning away, is there? There's no turning away. I'm going to close with a prayer in a minute that St. Augustine, an early church father and theologian, wrote. He says, to turn away from God is to fall. So there is no alternative, is there? To turn to, towards God and to stand before God is to abide in God forever and to stand and withstand. Think of how overwhelmed the little group of Christians in that powerful Roman city of Ephesus must have felt. But Ephesus became a stronghold of Christianity, and the Roman Empire became the Holy Roman Empire. I was having lunch with our friend Pastor Gordon Bratz this week, who this earlier this summer took a tour that brought him to Croatia. He showed me a picture of the Cathedral of St. Domnius, in the Croatian city of Slip. The original structure was a mausoleum and a bell, tire, bell tower for the Roman Emperor Diocletian. Some of you may recognize that name. He was known for instituting the last and the most severe persecution of Christians in the Roman Empire. His persecution failed to wipe out Christianity, as evidenced by Christians building on top of an emperor's grave. And I wanted to take pleasure in it, but I couldn't. Because God's son died even for Emperor Diocletian. And that is the point of this all, that the only way to real and lasting peace is Jesus Christ. It is with this armor of God's own making and giving that we take up our life each day to stand and to withstand and to stand tall unto the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>